Alright everybody, welcome to Fresh Out The Box. Uh, I am Jerhananan. Today we are going to be playing The Expanse. And I will be playing Addison. I'm Casualty CDG, but you can call me Gary. And tonight, during The Expanse, I'll be playing the part of Iggy Moon, which is a gender-swapped version of Izzy Moon, one of the characters in the Quick Start. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be filling our techie role tonight. Uh, I'm Alicia. Uh, I, you can find me on Twitter at Hidden Audio, uh, which is the uh, Twitter account for my horror podcast, uh, The Hidden Heart. And I will be playing Nico Velez tonight. Um, and Nico is a pilot and an Earther, and uh, like that, I suppose. Sounds good. Oh. Uh... I'm Ian Lemke, and uh, I'm the current developer for the Expanse role-playing game for Green Ronin Publishing, and I'll be running the game tonight. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We're so lucky to have Ian here from Green Ronin. Uh, go ahead and check out. You can buy all the books on greenronin.com. Uh, I think some things are available on DriveThruRPG. Uh, definitely check them out. The quick start guide for The Expanse is uh, free to download on the Green Ronin website. So if you like what you see, make sure that you check it out. Yep. And we, well, I will say that I think the uh, our core rulebook is currently out of print, but you can pick it up in a lot of game shops around. Uh, support your local game shop. We always, you know, encourage that. Um, and uh, we've got a new book coming out soon, which is going to be Ships of the Expanse. So yeah, I I don't want to give a date because the <laughs> pandemic. We don't want to we don't want to make any promises either. But we when we we talk to to some people about ships of the expanse, and they're like, yeah, when we release that supplement, you guys may be able to take a, a first look at one of the ships. And so I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but that would be super dope. We're we're looking right. forward to working with Green Road and maybe checking out the ships of the expanse also. It it, it will be yeah. It, Early summer. I, I will say early summer. It should be out. For summer sure. Ish. Summer ish. These days, you just, you never know. So, um, are we beginning here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, well, the, the group of you already know each other. Um, you're all the, you're the crew of a very small ship. Uh, it's basically uh, more or less a rock hopper with an Epstein drive. <laughs> Uh, that's been, you know, tacked on, kind of like the ship I, you know, just looks something like what, what I put up there on the screen. Um, uh, it, uh, it does have, uh, PDC cannons for defense, uh, that's about it. And you run around, uh, basically doing whatever you can to keep yourselves going. Uh, you know, you, what you'd really like is eventually to have a decent merchant concern of some sort, uh, but... You know, you've got this tiny little ship, uh, but you know, sometimes you sometimes you do some prospecting, you know, all sorts of things. Um, right now, uh, you're out in the belt uh, doing some prospecting, uh, and uh, you know, you've had plenty of time to get to know each other out here, uh, floating through space on the float, uh, you know, uh, scanning asteroids and seeing what you can find. Um, the days have been very regular and steady and routine. You've just sort of fallen into a rope doing the same thing day after day after day in this tiny enclosed space. Um, occasionally make some course corrections or you know move over to another asteroid, but so far nothing's been interesting. You know, um, when I got out of the life of crime, I thought this would be a little more interesting than scanning rocks all day. <laughs> One would hope. Um, you, uh, you're, you're going closer to one of the, the tumbling rocks in the belt, uh, midway through the day-long shift, uh, which is, again, just super routine, um, when your long-range scans uh, pick up a metallic body uh, whose composition and shape isn't an asteroid, uh, but is almost certainly a ship of some kind. Uh, it emits no transponder signal, however, and its uh, power emissions are essentially nil at this distance. Its drive isn't active, that's very clear, uh, and it's likely the reactor is shut down. It's adrift, a ghost ship floating in the belt. Oh, hold on, I got something on the scanners that looks like it might be salvage. 
Ooh, here we go. Finally, some action out here. I don't think salvage counts as action. That's better than what we've been doing. Fair. So... You're, um, are you, are you a pro, who's the pilot? Uh, that would be Nico. I, right? I'm the pilot, yeah. So I guess I'll just take us in for a nice approach. Okay. Um, go ahead. Uh, let's see here. Iggy's on sensors, right? So go ahead and give me a um, a technology test. So you can just click on the technology button later. Uh, sorry, oh. hold on. Oh, oh, that's that's right. for, Is that's on my for, character for, sheet? Well, it's for Iggy. Sorry. Oh. Gary. Yes, I uh, I rolled a 16. Okay, that's plenty good. Um, the other ship is a little bigger than a ship's boat itself, uh, or a drop ship. Uh, probably a modified small freighter. Uh, it's about 30 meters long. It's a little bigger than yours. Um, it clearly has a drive cone for an Epstein drive. Visual scan shows it also has a torpedo launcher and point, point defense cannons. Meet it means it's either a military or security ship or a pirate, uh, since civilian ships don't generally mount those kind of weapons, especially not torpedoes. Um, there's no registry name on the exterior or related markings on the ship's hull, uh, no active transponder symbol, uh, signal. Um, a lack of transponder could mean either it's damaged or offline, or it could be an illegal modification to the ship's systems. Uh, Lack of registry markings tends to indicate that it's either a smuggler or a, pi or a pirate. There's also no heat readings coming from the ship, and other energy readings suggest the reac reactor is in fact shut down, and uh, there it's not transmitting anything either. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, so I've got no life forms on board, I'm not reading anything from, from here. It's hard to tell. I mean, life forms with the type of sensors you have, the scanners you have on on your ship, de detecting life forms is difficult. Um, unless there's a bunch of them. If there were, you know, it, there's clearly not a lot of people on there. If, but no, no heat readings. So, so no, no heat readings initially, guys. Uh, Nico, uh, do, do you see a place to pull up? Yeah. Do you want me to dock? Is there a place to dock? Yeah. There. It, it, the ship has an airlock. Um, that will require a little bit of a piloting test just because, you know, it's tumbling in space. So you're, you're going to have to line up your ship with it and then and then come in and dock. Um, yeah, if you want to give it a, a, a pilot test, go ahead. I got a 14. A 14. That should do it. No problem. You, you line up and dock. Um, actually, with your sensors test, that will give you a little bit more. You are able to more or less see the interior the ship. Let's switch over to a different screen. So that's sort of a side view of the different levels of the ship. Oh, very nice. Uh, you are docking, you know, one of these. Now oh, I hate that. Why is that doing it? Yeah, basically, those are the airlocks. Awesome. Let's see if you're docking right there. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, you're. I'll dock. You're docked. No problem. So, do we have a captain? <laughs> I would say you probably the three of you more or less. It's it's sort of a mutual thing. Um, you don't actually have a leader type in your you know your group. Uh, so it's it, it probably just sort of depends on what the circumstances are, what you're doing, who sort of takes the lead. Um, it's a joint okay. effort. Okay. Well, what do y'all think here? Well, when I see a powered down ship, I'm looking at you, buddy. I could probably get the power back up and running. You need help? Ah, uh, that would be mighty fine. Uh. Yeah, just point in a direction and tell me what to do. Yeah, no, no point in us all risking our lives at first. Let me go see if uh, it's safe in there first. Uh, we have suits, right? Yes, you have suits. Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna don my suit. Okay. Um, are you are you taking any weapon we were with you or? or I just... I will bring. I believe I have a handgun. Okay, so you have a little pistol. You bring that along. Pew, pew. Uh, um. All right. So you're docked with the ship. Um, you 
their airlock uh, is powered down. Um, so you would uh, you'll need to uh, get it open, which will require a technology test. I, I shall was bring my that tools. Up. Is okay. that an engineer move or is that a uh, is that a hacker move? It could be either, honestly. Okay. Um, I, I do also have uh, technology. Let me give that a, a little roll. Okay. Roll, roll. Ooh. A nine. Okay. Uh, that is in fact what you needed. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a very simple test. So fortunately, you did get it. Um, it takes you a moment. Well, you did get a stunt point too, so you could do a doubles. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you, you eventually, you, you work on it, but you eventually get it open. Um, let me, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens for you. It's, it's big and black right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like space, infinite yep. space. Oh, that's, oh. that's what it looks like inside the ship when the lights are off. Yeah, pretty much. So, so right now, uh, Addison and Iggy are together in the ship, and I'm on board our ship. You're on board. Uh, yeah, you're definitely still on board your ship. Um, I don't know which it was Addison's was going over. Right? Yeah, I'm going over by myself just in case, you know, everything explodes. No need in us all day. Let me just bring this over. Just take me a second. Uh, in, and I will reveal some of the map for you. Yes. Thank you. There you go. Are you able to find that? Yes. Hey, All look, right. that's me. That's what I look like. <laughs> it's you. What do you know? <laughs> All righty. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to... Can I peek out? Is there, like, a window on the airlock door? Yeah, uh, you, you you can you can kind of peek out. Um, the the ship is uh, running on emergency light, lighting, probably backup batteries, um, and there's sort of like occasional sort of strobing flashes of pale yellow light. Um, and as you look out and you see something float across your view, hmm. but you lose track of it in the darkness. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I guess I, I'll make I'll make a noise in my my inner copy, like, "Huh." You okay over there? Yeah, I thought I, I thought I saw something in there. Was it a body? Ah, uh, it's too soon to tell. I I'll keep you posted. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll Briefly, open... you see, see something float back across the other way. Maybe it might. You caught a glimpse of something. You're not sure. It m might have been a person. Might have been a person. Yeah. Could have been a person. It could have been space playing tricks on my mind. Can I fire up the scanners and scan again, see if there's something out here? Sure. Uh, you get nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing that interesting. Well, actually, what you roll? Let me see. I rolled. I rolled just an eleven. Yeah, you get nothing. Uh, there's the ship, just as you saw it. Uh, you're you're able to you're able to get a uh, heat signature from Addy because he's still, you know. Yeah, just Addy, I can confirm that's just uh, that's just space playing tricks on you. Scanners are showing clear outside. Well, that's good news. At least it's not a pirate trap. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna enter. I'm gonna make okay. entry into this derelict vessel. The next door you can open up just manually at that point. Um, you are getting that it is it is hard vacuum in here. Um, there is uh, no. Um, I'm sorry, trying to Does that change the reach, huh? Uh, or yeah, or 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 all of the somehow all of the oxygen's been sucked out. Yep. There's no air in here, guys. But there's no air. All the air is gone. Um, so you're stepping out into here, scanning around with your uh, headlight there. And I'll just say, basically, you can see all of this pretty much. And 
then uh, give me a dexterity roll, which is initiative. Oh no. <laughs> You just click, click on your dexterity straight up. Oh, just click on. Oh, okay, here we go. Boom. That's All right. not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, they said. <laughs> what did you get? Three ones. Three, three ones. Ones. Three ones. <laughs> hey, you got a stun point. No, you don't get stun points for initiative, actually. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, the interior is very dark, save for some luminescent uh, emergency lighting, as I said. Um, off to your right as you enter you see something drifting in the micro microgravity it's sort of moving out into the center of the room uh and your the your lamp, lamp light from your vac suit shines across it and you see that it is someone in a vac suit um uh, their faceplate, uh, but you see also that the faceplate of the suit is broken and you see s small shards of glass Floating, you know, through the air as well, um, or the lack of air. Uh, so yeah, so that's what you see. Ha! Huh. Uh, uh, Addy? This ain't no spaceship. It's a tomb. Let me uh, guess, you found some body. I don't know what movie I stole that from, but I definitely <laughs> stole it from a movie. I mean, didn't we kind of figure that, I mean, it was salvaged, dead dead ship in space. I mean, that's fair. But maybe I was time. just trying to be a little more optimistic. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna look around to see. The West uh, um, it looks like a it looks like a cargo deck. Um, other than that, it appears to be empty. I think it's safe for y'all to come over now. Alright. Uh, so I'm gonna grab my gear, put on okay. a suit. Put the put the old girl in park and uh, head over with Iggy. Before I go over, can I uh, send out like a, a ping or an SOS post that you know to like local uh, the local system? Let them know that we found a, a derelict ship of bodies. I'm sure. Yeah, you can do that. I would like to do that. At least we have a. Here, let me send off one final message and make sure at least we have our last words documented. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, okay. you could just put it in the ship log and not send it. We don't gotta uh, give up our salvage. By the time anybody makes it here, we'll have whatever we want on board and be way out of this system. I just don't want to bury all these bodies. Alright, you guys able... I mean, I'm not sure why I can't edit those. Oh well. I don't know what's going on here. That's fine. We'll just, I'll just move. You just tell me where you're moving and I'll move for you. Unless you're able to actually move them. I can move mine. And I can move oh, mine. I can. <laughs> Not uh, able to edit them. I don't... It's just John can move them all. <laughs> Wait, there we go. It oh, knows that I'm usually a game master, too. Uh, so this is, is okay. this a ladder going down in the middle of the room? Yeah, going uh, down and up. You're you're in the center of the ship, more or less. Here, gotcha. I'll just go back to, I'll go back to the Picus view here real quick. Um, you are essentially right here. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So the ladder should going up and going down. You figure down would be down to engineering. Command would be up at the top. Uh. Well, Any command ideas? would be where I would be most useful. I'm just putting that out there. I mean, yeah. Um, so, Addy, but we would probably get more salvage from engineering, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. There's probably where the good stuff is. It's going to be hard to unload anything in this room. Can we see the torpedoes in here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are they intact? They have their crash. Oh, yeah. They're intact. That's a hell of a payload. Yeah, what do y'all think? This seems kind of... Fishy? Yeah. Well, if we want to find out, maybe there are some uh, old recordings in command that we could listen to and figure out what's going on. Look, if the two of you want to stay idea. out here in the belt and scan rocks for the rest of your life, by all means, have that it. But I'm thinking about taking these four, these four torpedoes and making a little bit of profit so we can get the hell out of this lifestyle. 
I mean, it's going to be awfully hard to unload them, uh, especially given that we reported the salvage. I might know a few people that can unload some missiles like this. I agree with, uh, with Nico. We just turn over the payload. You were the one who didn't even want to send out the SOS beacon in the first place. She now you want to turn over the payload. <laughs> she said she, said, she said to go cat. check out the command center. Let's get everything. Uh, let's get everything fired up then. Did did your other characters just vanish? Yes. That is weird. <laughs> we disappeared. <laughs> But yeah, I'm down the head to the command to check the logs. Okay. As Nico okay. has suggested. Yeah, I'm probably already heading there. I'll follow. Okay. Right. Let me uh, bring up the ship again. Bring your characters up again. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. Uh, there you go. So, who's going where? I'm sorry. Uh. uh yeah. I'm gonna head for a uh, command. You're going up. Okay. Yes. And I will follow. And that would be Izzy. Iggy. No, that's Daddy. I'm at Okay, so you're going up. You two are going up, and Izzy is going down. I think I'm just going to hang out here on this floor for a minute and, and check out these these missiles. I think I'm going to inspect them. Okay. I, I know there's not much to be found here, but just for the, the flavor of the scene, uh, Iggy's really interested in how much money he can make off these missiles. Sure. No worries. Um, so you get up second the next level up yes. I'll just reveal all this and move the two of you up there go ahead and give me a you can go ahead and give me like a technology or engineering test if you're examining the missiles um, I'll throw a technology for a 17 altogether all right uh, good roll um, they are uh, they are normal torpedoes, uh, definitely of value. Uh, I mean, you could sell them individually, or you can, you know probably as a group. Um, and let's move up to here. Are you two pausing at all, or are you just going straight up? Um, I guess we could, like, throw a light around each floor, but probably not take a... I wouldn't take a huge amount of time to, uh, to, uh, hmm, what are words? <laughs> to, to infect stuff right. until I get to the command center. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, you're there. Um, you come out in what looks like a galley area. Um, the next level up. Um, let me... I need to do something real quick. Um, are there bodies on this floor, too? Um, the galley. Yes. Sorry about that. Good. Uh, there is one body fro floating freely here. Uh, uh, there's... It sort of got, has a foot caught on one of the benches, but it's, yeah, it's basically just floating there. Um, they are not wearing they're not wearing a vac suit uh, and appear to have died of asphyxiation and exposure. Well, looks like they got caught having lunch. Who did this? That's what I want to know. Maybe it was just mechanical failure. Maybe their life support gave out. Maybe. Or maybe it was murder, I'll say to you, jokingly. <laughs> murder most foul. Let's keep going up. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to roll a die. All right. And you come up to the next level. This you only see a little bit of it. If you page up a little bit. You'll see the room. Um, and there is no one in this area. Um, each of you make a, uh, it would 
the perception or if you have seeing test. I have searching. Do you just want it, to do perception? Uh, well, yeah, I guess you, you're kind of sur- you're you are looking around for whatever. So yeah, I'll, I'll allow that. Sixteen. Okay. What I got? I got a fifteen. All right. Um. Okay. Both of you see it before it attacks you or does anything. Um, on the roof, uh, well, not the roof, the ceiling of this work of this uh, small chamber, you see what looks like a small circular shaped drone. Uh, small, it being that it's about a meter in diameter. Um, it's clinging to the to the ceiling uh, with these extended claws. Uh, and it, it sort of lights up. There it is. Uh, lights up as as you spot it, and you see what looks like a, a weapon of some sort deploying. Well, that's not good. Would you like to roll initiative with it? Uh, uh, I, I think it's best that we do. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get caught on the ladder with it chasing me, so yeah. It only takes one bullet to put a hole in a vac suit. Oh, it got a 21! <laughs> How do you roll initiative? It's dexterity, just straight dexterity. Unless you have a, there is a initiative focus you can take, but you do not unfortunately get stunt points for this one. Um, I got 17. Okay. 14. So the drone goes first. Um, I'm just going to determine randomly who it attacks. I'm going to say 1 through 3, it attacks Nico, 4 through 6, Addy. And so it shoots at Addy. The drone fire. Ready. ready. You are ready. Like this. Boom. Alright. What is your defense? My defense is 12. 12. It got a 14. Um, so it does hit you. Ow. And... You take 10 damage. Well, you take 10, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, can, you can use your fortune to remove that. Uh, am I supposed to be at the maximum? Yes, you okay. are. So I, my max is 20, so I shall so, you're, so now you're down to 10. All right. And Iggy, you hear that very clearly coming from right up above. You hear this like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna barely get out of the way. Uh, look out! I think Nico is next. Okay. Um, so how how far above us is it? Um, well, the 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 ceiling is uh, it's about two and a half, about three meters each. Uh, so it, it's on the ceiling. It's about three meters away. Okay. Three meters above you. And um, there's no, there's gravity in here, or there's not. Gravity? There is no gravity. Um, I'm presuming you're using your your gravity, your um, your uh, magnetic boots, so you, you're secured to the floor. Um. Okay. Um, God, this is already a terrible idea. But um, can I disable magnetic boots and like like try to tackle the thing because you said it's only about three feet in diameter? Yes, it's about a meter in diameter. Yes. Uh, yeah, you could try to grab the thing if you want. Um, uh, let's see, you're you're a you're a belter, right? I'm an earther. <laughs> I'm a small girl. I'm from Mars. Okay. I'm the belter. Right. Um, yeah, but y- you could make a uh, you. It's going to require two tests to do that. Uh, because you're going to be in microgravity, it's not as you know. It's not as easy to move. I mean, if you're just you know, moving normally, you can move normally. So the first thing would be a uh, a dexterity test, um, and then the following one would be a um, fighting test, unless you have grapple. 
I don't have that ball. Okay. Let's see. 15, no problem. Oh, oh wait, okay. You, yeah, so... Okay, 15, four stunt points. So, let's see here. What could you do with those stunt points? Um, I'm excited. I'm just going to look at... So what exactly... You, so you're just trying to get up there and just grab the thing? Yeah, so... I, I guess, like... Am I allowed to use grappling stunts even though I'm not a grappler? Yes. Um, my idea was to pin it, actually, which is right here on four stunt points. Okay. Um, that being the case, even though you got the roll on the, the stunts on the move, I'm going to allow you to use them uh, for the actual attack. Uh, it's sort of one and the same thing. Uh, so you make a fighting grappling roll. Um, it can. It, they can't do anything other than a free action next turn. Uh, okay. So, yeah, you basically fly. Uh, you just launch off the. You, you, you click off your your mag boots. You you fly up towards it, uh, pushing off and grab. Basically, grab onto the thing, sort of uh, pinning it up against the ceiling and it's uh and the little and the gun that it, it put out so that it can't actually attack you um and I, I will say also since they, well this will happen next turn but they can't get it done uh they it also has a small port and it's trying to put something else out another type of weapon which it manages to do that but it can't attack you with the next turn. but anyway um so, awesome. Addy, that, <laughs> Nico has the thing pinned up against the wall, sort of. <laughs> it's going to be hard to keep it there because you're in microgravity. Yeah, my, uh, my, my my initial reaction was to return fire, and I'll point my gun at it, and I'll be like, ah, I can't get a shot. Uh, but then I'll disengage my grab boots, and I'm going to go try to use... I'm going to try to get to it, and then use engineering to disable it, hopefully. Ah, since she has okay. it pinned. I, I didn't think I'd be able to do that, but since she pinned it, I think I can. I, I, yeah, I, I will give you that. So, yeah, go ahead and give me a dexterity test. Dexterity. You need an 11, you need an 11 to launch yourself up there. Safely. Yeah. I use two fortune. So you can use two fortune, if you wish. Yes, I shall. Okay, so you're up to it. Um, and you're going to try to disable the thing. Yes. Uh, do you want engineering or technology? They're both the same for me. It would be engineering in this case because you're, you're trying to just, you know, mechanically disable it at this point. Um, so yeah, give me a dexterity, uh, sorry, a engineering test. 15. 15. Um, I will allow you with a 15 to do one thing to it. Um, you could, it, it has two forms of mobility, it appears. It has, uh, well, it, it has thrusters that it can move around in the microgravity. It has little claws that it can extend on cables to pull itself around. And it has those extended right now, holding itself up to the ceiling. Um, it also has a, a gun, a small a small firearm, and a stun baton that it is deploying. And so you can disable any one of those things. I'm going to disable the gun. Okay, so the, you manage to, you know... <laughs> You know, get a wrench in there and and jam and and just you know wreck the gun essentially. Um, so we go to next round. Uh, the thing cannot take any action. It's at that point it's trying to deploy the stun baton. Uh, Nico, what do you wish to do? You're still on it at this point. Uh, can I fire a pistol into one of its ports? Uh, yes, you could try to do that. Okay. I'm not going to give you a bonus um, simply because you're in such an awkward position. Um, but yeah, uh, but it's fine. You didn't need a bonus and you got three stun points. <laughs> Can I like save my stun points? <laughs> no, you have to use them that round. Okay, uh, give me one second. Uh, da, 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 gun stunts. I'm actually a really big fan of the use the stunt points this round rule. Uh, yeah. The the homebrew rule we have in our channel to boon or doom people is the same way. Uh, gotcha. Use it right now. Just like, Usually it's an action. It's a scene that's booned or doomed. Uh, I love um, it. 
All right. Um, what about? Oh no, I don't have an automatic. Oops. All right. Uh, da, 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 general combat. Mm-hmm. You can. Uh, one thing you could do, you could spend two points to just. Well, one you, you could spend two points to just make a second attack. Uh, you could also over- overcome its toughness, which it does have armor toughness. So you could uh, two points w- of that would overcome its uh, would it, uh, its toughness would go to half would be halved. All right, um, let's do that. That's cool. Okay, which basically that is almost ex- makes sense. It's almost exactly what you were talking about doing. You're 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 bypassing the exterior and shoving your gun into one of the ports. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and give me a roll. Uh, for damage. Okay, if you go on your character sheet, there. Uh, uh, there's, I... there's a die next to the damage. And okay. just click on that die and it should do it. Okay. okay. So you did nine points of damage. Mm. You did nine damage, and but you used some of its toughness. Uh, so it has. Okay, so I have I have to spend. It's at least going to be injured. Okay, yeah, or wounded. Okay, uh, you stick your gun into one of its ports, and it sparks, and uh, and smoke comes out of it, and you see all the lights go down, and it just sort of it's just hanging there off the ceiling, with you clinging to it. It's gone. Hot damn! You imported. Uh, you input his output. <laughs> <laughs> you probably shoved your gun right into the port where the gun had come out, and Addy had ripped it off. Yeah. Well, that was fun, but not really. Can we, let's not do that again. I had I no idea slowly. you were so handy in a fight. I come slowly climbing up the ladder. Okay. Uh, uh, what the hell did you guys get into up here? It looks a fight. like it looks like there might still be some security forces online in here. Maybe we should get to an access point so I can turn them off. These are really weird. Um, you you have not seen uh, drones like this. Nor I mean, this is not typical uh, <laughs> to have on board a small ship and some kind of unknown military tech, maybe. Yeah, they look very slick <laughs> and sleek. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've never seen anything like this. I don't think that they are part of the ship. Well, should we take a moment and take this drone back to our ship just so that you can study it later, Eddie? Mm, maybe I can get some info right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to search it for... Uh, I'm going to try and access its manufacturing information you will have to use engineering because it's it's pretty much you know it's it's offline at this point um so yeah you can you can use engineering to see if you can figure out anything about the drone 19. 19. hot damn um yeah it's martian uh very cutting edge tech um you figure out pretty much everything about it. Like I said, it has a built-in gun. It has a built-in stun baton. It has it has uh, exhaust ports, so it can it can, it can sort of fly around in, in microgravity. If there's gravity, it can't really fly, but in microgravity, it can fly. Um, and then if it, if there is gravity, it has all these little uh, basically cables that can shoot out. Uh, you know, things like Doc Ock, you know, and, and grab on the things and pull itself around. Um, I'll pretty much be saying all of this while pointing out the stuff I'm finding out to everybody. Yep. Yeah, tell me why I'm not surprised the Martians are behind some kind of killer robot tech. Hey, I'm not surprised either. We're really good engineers. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, this vessel is not Martian, correct? This va- vessel is definitely not Martian. Well, if Martians attack the ship, why would they leave a drone? Like, why would they leave security measures to and then ditch? That is a really good question. Maybe they don't want us to find something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bundle this drone. I'm just gonna like wrap it 
in something nearby and just kind of like uh, clip it to the ladder so it doesn't float off so we can retrieve it on our way back. There really isn't anything... The, the, the room you're in is like very Spartan. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's almost like a hall, a large hallway. Um, it, you get the impression just looking at the doors and, and knowing, being an engineer and knowing about ships, that it's probably the crew quarters level. Um, if you wanted to go into one of the crew quarters, you could probably, uh, you know. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it's kind of disturbing that this thing was in the crew quarters. I'm going to, I'll press a button on, uh, one of these doors to the, but the doors do not respond because remember the ship's completely powered oh, right, down. Right, right, completely you have, you have to manually open them, uh, which again doesn't require a test, but you just sort of have to, you know, pump the thing. I'll push the button. I'll be like, oh yeah, <laughs> and, then <I'll, laughs> and then I'll pry it open. All right. Um, do the manual override like a smart engineer would do. <laughs> you open the door. Which which one do you want to open? Ooh, I got choices. Uh, so that's there's three of them. Uh, yes, there are three. Okay, uh, I'll do the one opposite of those two power bank looking things. Okay, so it's t- t- towards the top. Towards the top, yeah. Get my ups and downs confused because we're in space. There is a, another body inside there, um, flo- just free floating. Uh, looks like they're sort of in the bunk, um, or were in, you know, like sitting on the bunk or something. But they are also uh, looks like they died of exposure. Yeah, died in their sad. sleep. Dad, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and there's another. There's a smaller, there are like, yeah, there's other doors. Oh, wow. Right right there, too. See, I thought this level was kind of small. Uh, Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll relay this information. There's a lot of rooms here. Maybe we should book it to command, like Nico said, though. Yeah, I really want to find out if we can extract any information from command. I'm worried we might have to go back down to engineering to get everything online. It's true. Addy, give me a perception test. Oh, that's me. I'm Addy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, perception. I'm perceptive. Okay. Not very well. Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> you see a room. That looks cool. You see a room. And, but yeah, if you wanted to get something to secure the drone at that point, you could get straps or, or whatever you, you wanted to get in there. There, there's some cargo containers that, that have like bungees on them. Or... Yeah, I'm just going to budgie into the ladder so we can grab them on our way down. Okay, that's no problem. You have to rip the claws free from the uh, ceiling, but it's not, not an issue. <laughs> I'll, I'll get, I'll get uh, the other two to help me. I'll be like, a little help would be nice. <laughs> uh, but I, guess, I guess we should probably go then. Okay, so you're gonna continue on upwards. Is that? that Did the... we want to go back down to engineering and turn everything on? Where that might you? be a good idea if you think so. That's was well, the thing. We're already one floor away from command. So do we just want to check it out now, or do we want to go back down? I, I, well, I maybe maybe preference. we can like maybe we can like extract some data from it without turning things on. So you you, we... you you get the impression everything is shut down. You probably not be able to access the computers with. Okay. Well, in that case, then yeah, we should definitely head to engineering. Yeah. All right. While you guys were fighting that drone, I was thinking about those uh, those torpedoes that we have, and you know, with four torpedoes, we might be able to unload them all at once. I think we could make a decent amount of scrap. Hey, you're not wrong. The thing you consider this ship is so far, you don't see any damage to it, and it's significantly better than yours. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. What do you and think, Nico? Uh, I'll, I'll be saying this as we're heading back down. I'm going to bring the drone, though, since we're heading closer to the airlock. Okay. So you bring the drone along. What do I think about what? Uh, this old girl, and I'll slap the hole. Uh, I want it. That's what I think. 
Huh. I'll, I'll look at uh, Izzy. Be like, uh, and I'll shrug. And be like, nah, well, give me a week and I might be able to scrub the serial numbers off this thing. It doesn't have serial numbers. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's very fishy. Yeah, you know what? I, I I seem to recall when we scanned this, it doesn't have any serial numbers or any access or any any log information. So uh, we may just have ourselves a free ship. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll look around. There ain't no such thing as free. Don't say we never did anything for you, Nico. Well, hey, it seemed to uh, cost everybody in here their lives. So obviously not totally free, but free for us. No. Well, then we're forever indebted to their bodies. You made it weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, yeah you, you glide on down. Uh, it's the bottom one there. Uh, but yeah, you glide on down to uh, to the uh, engineering section. Ooh, that looks cool. Is that a mid chair? Um, where? No, it's just a regular ca- crash couch. Okay, I was just curious. It's just so the engineer, like if you if you go under thrust, the engineer can <laughs> have somewhere to sit down. Oh, it's my place to sit. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. And this is engineering, right? This is engineering. Yes. Can we? Uh, is there any way to get the? I'm the engineer, so yeah. Is there any way to get the power up and running from here? Yeah, you can. You, you can use any of the panels here. Um, to try to access, I would love to do so because this has a direct link. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me a technology test. Technology. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna look around yes. at my companions and say, "Hold on to your butts." Is assisting a thing in the age system? Yeah, I will. I will allow you to roll as well. You can both roll uh, because actually this is a uh, an advanced test uh, which requires uh, multiple successes. So. Wow, and you both got stun points. That's awesome. Um, All right. Nico holds on to her butt cheeks. <laughs> Hold on. To <laughs> You're ready for something to happen. You don't know what. Um, <laughs> so Eddie's poking around a bit, at it a little bit. But Iggy, you're trying to get this thing to boot up and start, um, but something is stopping it. Uh, like every time the reboot starts, it's shut down. Uh, apparently manually from the reactor itself from the reactor controls itself which you know are, are further down actually by the reactor itself uh, normally you can control everything from here but there's every time like I said every time you try and boot it up it it's like somebody shuts it down well ain't that weird yeah it's almost like there's a countermeasure in the system trying to keep us out maybe it's another one of those drones I'm going to say with three stun points and the fact that you're a hacker, um, you don't think there's any countermeasures in the system? Uh, it, it's as if someone down there is manually doing it. Oh. 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 Yeah, it's my- as if someone down there is manually doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it might be one of those drones. Yeah, some someone or something. Or maybe there's a survivor. Uh, maybe there's a survivor. There goes our free ship. Well, if it's a survivor, we should probably, I don't know, interrogate them? I'll, save I'll pull, them? I'll pull out my gun, I'll cock it, I'll be like, no one has to know about them. But then I, I'm, like, clearly joking. <laughs> like, clearly. <laughs> Addie. Just clearly joking. Addie, please. I'm, um, I'm going to point at the lab and be like, who? after you. You look at who and say that? Either one of you, after, after you. I, and then I look at Nico. Okay, um, I'm gonna deactivate my mag boots and go down head first with my gun ready. Okay, so you're going down head first with your gun ready. Uh, let me switch to there. I'll look at Izzy and Shrug, and I will follow suit. Uh, before, by... Right before you jump down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, you know, my wrist hurts. It's it's carpal tunnel, so I I don't think I should go. I don't think I should go down there first. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll audibly laugh. So you're, you're just going down last? Is that how that's working? That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in the middle. 
Yeah, I dodged the first encounter by looking at bombs, and I want to be last into this one because my red <laughs> All right. Look, we're not all the brave one, okay? I'll turn no, to, no. I'll talk to Izzy. I'll, uh, in space, no one can hear you whine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just put Izzy up there, and you guys are sort of here. And... Okay. So you come down here. The the, uh, the, uh, the actual reactor is one level lower. Um, here you see there are... Um, there's some additional cargo. Uh, it looks like a machine shop, um, and also has some extra bunks down here. Um, the you see there are a number of crates stashed down here as well. Um, one of them is broken open. Um, there, but and all three of them are magnetically fastened to the deck. Um, there are two people here, neither wearing vac suits. Um, but go ahead, and, uh, any all three of you, if you want, can give me a perception test. Dead people, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Eighteen. Yeah, six, like six. aliens. <laughs> Eighteen six hundred points. Addison realizes immediately uh, that while the the bodies are frozen um, because uh, the corpses are frozen because you know, you know, floating in space, um, they uh, both have been shot, which you think is probably the cause of death. Uh, I'll, I'll yell out, "They've been shot!" and I'll look around for the perpetrator. Okay, you do not see a perpetrator. Like I said, there's there's three crates. All well, there, well, there's three crates in the center. That there's a bunch of crates stashed then as well um, in a corner. Uh, they all have um, Martian military uh, logos on them. And uh, they lost their lives defending this. Oh. One of them, one, one of the three crates, looks like it's busted open. Uh, but the other two are, are currently closed. Can I examine that yeah. open crate? Sure. Um, it's just kind of floating there. Uh, the, the lid's sort of floating up and down a little bit. Um, just sort of op- looking at it, it looks like someone actually like broke the magnetic lock on it. Maybe shot it. <laughs> uh, and And then opened it. And inside, you see basically this nice little cushy foam area about it. it and the crate itself is a little over a meter, meter in diameter. And the, the area is sort of a disc shape about a meter in diameter. Um, you can tell pretty empty. well. Yeah, it's empty. You think it looks exactly the size of one of the trains. Oh. Uh, can I try to open one of the other crates? Uh, sure. That would require a technology test. Oh god, I'm here. Uh, I'm, gonna, okay. I'm gonna point my, my gun at the crate as she starts to open it. Wait, uh, a technology test? <laughs> I don't have technology. No, oh, in that case, it would be intelligence. Okay. I, can, I, can, I can help you out if you're. If I see you struggle with the crate. Yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> he goes like, uh. <laughs> I'm a pilot. You hand, I didn't realize that had a keyboard on it. So Iggy goes up and pop, 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 beep, 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 and it, it opens up. Um, I, this one is empty as well. On to okay. the next one? I will say since Iggy got that one, he can get the next one. That one is empty also. Um, are they, do they all have that circular depression? Yes, they, they all look like they held drones. In fact, uh, Iggy can tell... Actually, give me another tech... Hacking. 17. 17. Uh, right. no, no. Yeah, uh, you, you can tell... The, well, the, the crates sort of automatically close and relock after a few minutes. Mm. And like I said, there, there's another stack of crates over in the corner. 
pretty much. Uh, yeah, want to bet? Things right. Bet you guys a beer that there are more drones, or there were more drones than those. The other crates look different. The, these, uh, uh, the, the three you just opened were, were kind of square. These are more oh. uh, oblong, rectangular. Uh, torpedo size? No, no. Oh, okay. They're, about, <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're roughly a little over a meter. We had our we had our first boon of the session. Uh, Nico, you get a a bonus on your next check. All right, from our viewer, Captain oh. Grimley. Thank you. Well, it's called a focus. We'll say you get a plus two, or you can take two two fortune back if you spent any fortune. I didn't spend any fortune. Okay. <clears throat> um. So, so do I have to use the boon now? It'll be the next next time you have a test. Okay, uh, Izzy, uh, do you want to help me open the other things? I'd love to. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just, you just give me one test for them. These are pretty easy. I look over my shoulder to make sure that Addy still has his gun trained on these boxes. I got you, partner. Tell me what Five stud points. You, yeah, you... You, you come up with some program real quick on your on your on your handheld that, that lets you just automatically open all. Of them. Yeah, as soon as she says it, click and all the other three. Right. Yeah. Um, they are filled with uh, assault weapons and and high end Martian body armor. Uh, <laughs> bet you guys a beer. This ship is Martian. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they were smuggling stuff. Uh, but, like, torpedoes, drones, assault weapons, like, this is heavy duty. And yeah, no yep. wonder someone would kill for it. It all starting to make sense. You think, like, I don't know, an Earth spy sabotaged the ship? That sounds so dumb, but so <laughs> plausible right now. Right. Yeah, there's there's medium armor, um, but it's like I said, this is high end stuff. It's not it's not the usual. Uh, and and there's there's yeah, there's assault rifles and pistols. It's full of. I will um, pick up an assault rifle and check okay. its load. Uh, there there is uh, ammo separate. It, it's not loaded. I will load but, an but assault there are rifle. Clips. I'll. Uh... Take a new pistol, but I think Nico is like freaking out a little bit. Like, um, this is like we've just suddenly accidentally involved in ourselves in espionage and warfare. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And I see the two of you have already helped yourself to some of the merchandise, so that's coming out of both of your cuts. I'm not touching anything. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm protecting yeah, uh... our investment. I am starting to think we shouldn't salvage anything here. Uh, I will go... Uh, the engines are in here, right? The reactor? No, they're the next level down. Next level down. Okay. Yep. This is a machine shop and just sort of... It's like auxiliary storage, machine shop, uh, you know, and, and extra bunks. It's sort of like a multi-purpose little room. Well, if we want to figure out exactly what's going on, I say we finish uh, Nico's plan and get the engines up and running so we can check the logs. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're going to go down one more. Can we put on the armor over our back suits? Uh, no. Okay, I didn't think so. Good idea. Oops, wait. <laughs> Just hold it in front of you like a like a teacher, <laughs> like a... <laughs> You could sort of do that. Uh, <laughs> It'd just be hard to, to keep a grasp on it as soon as you started taking rounds. Why the hell do I keep deleting characters? It's like when I clear drawings, it clears the characters. That's I don't know, man. That's always been one of your oldest hobbies. You've always loved deleting characters. It's <laughs> long time you might have them in the drawing layer or something. Is there a trolling layer? I, I think so. I don't know. I'm not an expert on Roll20. That's fine. I just recopied them. It's good. Boom. Hey, look, it's all of you again. Let's delete Izzy from up here. Okay. Layer. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, there is an is drawing thing. Okay. <clears throat> huh. Funny. <laughs> 
have to learn something new every time. Every day is a school day. All right, so yeah, you get down. Uh, well, you're coming down. Nico's going down first. Uh, yeah, I guess like if if people <laughs> if people want me to go first, I I'm not totally bothered by that. So, yeah, we I'll... both we both look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll do my head first pistol ready, new pistol ready. Okay, so you you go down head first, new pistol ready. Um, you could give me a uh, perception or scene test if you have it. Okay. Uh, Still so missing two drones. What did I get there? <laughs> uh, I perceive very little. I uh, got a nine. You do get a, a bonus on this roll. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, you get a plus two. Oh cool. So. Oh yeah, I got an eleven. So you got an eleven. Uh, let me, um... Roll. One stop point. Well, um, it, and if it's a success, but... Oh, that's right, uh, yeah, it's a success. It is... <clears throat> I am down. What did it get? Did it beat your 11? Yes. Yes, it did. It okay. Sure did. <laughs> so you go, you're, like, scanning around and looking for whatever might be dangerous, and... Uh, just jump over here, grab a thing. <clears throat> um, there was a drone sort of hanging out over there, tucked away with its with like little cables hooked into the computers and everything. You see it as it well after it shoots at you, it gets a free shot at you. Oh, great. Um, so I'm going to make it shot. Um, what is your defense? 13. So it hit. Uh, and it hits you for... Oh. 12 damage. Um, okay, so you are effectively down here at this point. The other two of you are still still up above. Uh, so everybody roll initiative at this point. That's dexterity. 11. 10. What did I get there? Uh, 15. Okay, once again, the drone goes first. <laughs> These drones are whooping our asses on them in initiative rolls. So, like, I have 20 HP, right? And, like, just took 12 damage? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it is shooting you again. Oh, no. I'm gonna <laughs> die. And it hit you again. <laughs> you might be out. We'll see what happens. Hi, DB. Uh, Thanks for the raid, man. Yeah, you're welcome. And damage is nine, so that puts you one over your um, fortune, right? Yeah. So, so how do fortune points work? Okay, so you you will be out of fortune. Uh, it, you can become you can take an injured. Uh, you can you can take injured basically as a as a quality, um, and then roll one d six. But you automatically get it at that point um, as a condition. Sorry. Okay, so injured is my condition. Injured is your condition. You'll you'll automatically get a one because it's it's rolling one d six. But like, say you were a four over, you'd have to roll four or better to cover that. Um, but in this case, you're okay. You're injured, which means you're minus one on every action from now on. Uh, we okay. have all just been booned by one of our viewers. All of you. All three of us. Oh, all three of us. <laughs> Somebody's helping you out. Yeah. So. Uh, Nico, or anybody who's injured, if you want, I would, like I said before, you can either take two fortune back, um, or you can, uh, or you can use it for your roll. I am going to take mine back because I. Okay. Nico, that would give you two fortune if you if you want it. So then I would have like one fortune. No, there's no negative. It would just you're at zero, so it would just give you two. Okay, and that would. You're so still you might, you'd still be injured, but it'd still be injured. All right, I'll save it. Okay, so you okay? So you're, you're gonna save it for the roll. All right, 
Uh, but you go first. Or, yes, you go first. Uh, okay, so um, I think the the map is frozen for me. Um, so oh, can you tell me what? Okay, it is about uh, you. Sort of landed on the floor here. It is uh, three meters away uh, to the le- on the towards the left side of the screen. Uh, it is scarily close to the reactor. <laughs> Okay. Um, You're a little concerned that it shot, even. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about what? For the fact that it just it opened up fire down here. Um, okay. It's, it's right next to the reactor. Mm-hmm. Shooting uh, a reactor is usually not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, it is shut down, but it'd still get a radiation leak. If you... Yeah, I guess... Um, let me... I'll take... A, my action to aim. Okay, you can automatically, I think you can aim as a free action, in fact. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah so, so if you're not going to move, what it does, it gives you a plus one. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm going to... Um, so you'd have a total of plus three if you do want to shoot at it. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to aim and mm-hmm. use... The plus three, and I'm gonna shoot at it. Okay, give it a shot. Just don't roll three ones again. <laughs> All right. Uh, so pistol damage. Well, no, you rolled roll a damp, roll a hit first. Oops. Um. So that. How do I do that? Uh, uh, if you go to your shoot. Yeah, actually, no. Um. Hang on. It's a. Uh, oh, pistol. Go. Yeah, pistol. If you just click uh, under accuracy, just click on the pistol. Got it. I guess this pistol. 16, you hit. Now we'll roll cool. the damage. Alright. Uh, damage, damage, damage. Uh, Alright. 8, which is better than you rolled before. Um, so, uh, it doesn't actually have. It doesn't have fortune. So if you bypass its armor with a hit, uh, it just has to. It, uh, take condition. So it's taking the injured condition and trying to get to. Ooh! It'll take the wounded condition and covers it. Okay. So you shoot it and it sparks and sort of like <laughs> flies off to the side a little bit. Uh, it was a good shot. Um, but it is still moving. Um, so we have. Who's next? Initiative wise. Mm-hmm. Yep, a- Addy's next. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly on down this ladder here in the gunshots, uh, and I'm gonna see the drone, presumably. Yep. Uh, yep. And I would like to test out my shiny new assault rifle. Okay. Hopefully, I can uh, blow up the reactor. So the the assault rifle actually has a plus one to hit. Oh, nice. Uh, the GM cool. now has a boon from Captain Grimly. <laughs> Someone oh, did nice. boon the DM. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Let us. Should I just click the pistol thing? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh no 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 not pistol. Sorry. Uh, it would be ju- just dexterity at that point. Oh, just dexterity at that point. Okay. I, I. You know what? That was a good roll. I'll let you keep the roll. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So, what's your dexterity? Uh, my dexterity is two. Two. Okay, well, you did that right then. So you got a sixteen. You did hit. Um, you did not gain okay, stunt points. So just go ahead and roll damage for the for. Oh, do you have damage for an assault rifle? I do not. Okay. Uh, what's your perception? Uh, it's one. One. See, so your damage is two d six plus one. So if you just want to roll two d six. Two d six. Three. <laughs> Your new assault rifle is just super. Raining. Yeah, one of the bullets grazes off the um, the exterior of the uh, of the drone. Uh, it's, it's armored exterior. Um, smacks into the hull dangerously no. close. To the reactor. Ah! <laughs> no. But Stop it, shooting at the reactor! I say from the top of the ladder. <laughs> okay, Iggy, you can you can come down as well if you want. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I think I, I think I will. I'll drop down and look around this room and see if, while they're in this firefight, if I can flip a switch and get this thing, get the ship back on. Larger. It's more than flipping a switch. It's going to take, yeah. you know, a few minutes probably to get it back on. Is that something I can start click clacking away at now with uh, with with hacker boy skills? I mean, you can, but there's probably gonna be a drone shooting over your head or okay. you know, in your general direction. I, I I I have the utmost faith in my team, but I also don't want to get shot by bullets in the back. Um, and I don't want to shoot at this drone in this confined space. That's reasonable. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take cover. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna get down and take cover. You can take cover and and, and start and start trying to um trying to uh you know access the the computer. Go ahead and give me a, a hacking test. Gladly, a fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So this is a a challenge test, which means you have to get um the, the way it works is. The, there's a challenge rating, which is you know usually 10, 15, 20, that sort of thing. Um, and you use your stunt die, uh, so the last die there, and that, that tells me how many points you got towards uh, completing the challenge. So you got five points towards completing the challenge. Um, we will go to next round. Uh, and the drone is still there, and it's going to fire. It has a minus two. I'm going to use my plus two. Uh, to negate that, um, and it thinks can. <laughs> I'm gonna say one through four. It fires at Nico because Nico was already the target, um, but it may switch to, and has done the most damage. But on a five or six, it switches to Addy. Yes. So it switches to Addy. So the. <laughs> Drone fires. Yes. What, and what is your defense? Twelve. Just missed you. Oh, um, you. Yeah, Izzy, you're crouched down there, and bullets come whizzing by. Let me uh, just. Uh... <laughs> Where am I with the? One second. Oh man, I'm so relieved. I thought I was gonna. Or get hurt. Yeah, that damage comes on fast. I am. I forgot to add that last one. So yes, I am at ten. I am going to roll a die, uh, and on a four through six, uh, no, on a one through three, uh, I can introduce a hazard. Yes. And so there's nope. not enough. <laughs> You're lucky. And I was, it, it, if I rolled a, a one through three, I was going to have the, a radiation leak occur, but. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're lucky. Uh, no radiation leak. Uh, it, it shoots and misses. So, uh, Nico, you're up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, for some reason, you said Nico, and I thought of Iggy. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take aim and fire again. I assume I'm still sitting because I, I probably don't want to move around that much if I'm injured. Oh, I think I forgot to... Sorry about that. Move it the wrong way. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna do what? Uh, aim and fire again. Okay, uh, so you'll have a plus one. Uh, are, you are injured though, right? Yeah, so I guess so I'm even just firing. Yeah, even down. So it's a straight roll. Right, give me one second. Another boon for me, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um... Pistol? No, pistol. Okay. You know, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and use my boon to advance my churn tracker too. Ooh, that's scary. Is that reasonable? <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. Um, you do what you want with them. <laughs> so I got a, I got a 17 with six stunt points. You kill it. I, I'm not even gonna. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's little red eye thing, like is aim, it looking at you, and you just you just level your pistol, take aim, and, and just shoot it right through the eye, and the thing just explodes in the shrapnel. Not, not enough to damage the reactor, uh, probably damages the screen there a little bit, but it, it is it is utterly destroyed. That's what you get for shooting me. Um, yeah. Remind me never to piss you off, Nico. Also, um, like, where am I injured? 
it's 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 it's, it's a storytelling game. So however you want, an injury probably means. I mean, you're probably just raised somewhere at this point. You know, okay. a little bit. I mean, the damage also could have been from trying to dive out of the way. You know, you may have bumped your head or, you know, whatever. Okay, I got you. Whatever, however you want to roleplay it. Okay. I strained yeah. my control. Very good. Yeah, you may not have just been Swiss cheesed by bullets, but hey, maybe you are that tough. You tell me. Just like plugging three, taking three rounds <laughs> out of yourself with a pocket knife. Well, that's Amos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is Amos. At least once a season. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm be looking around cautiously, and be like, "There's supposedly one more, but it might be in command waiting for us." Izzy, oh, you want to give me another uh, another hacking test? I absolutely do. This one's a fourteen. Succeeds. Uh, adds one to your. T- so you're still working at it. Uh, the other two of you can either just stand by and wait, or if you want to do anything else, or assist. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I check the engine for damage to make sure it doesn't explode when we turn it on? Sounds like a good plan. Uh, yeah. Uh, give me a give me an engineering test for that. And 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 meanwhile, Izzy, go, Iggy, go ahead and give me another. Seventeen. Wow, you keep rolling moon. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you check it over, especially where the drone was, and everything looks looks pretty good. Um, you know, th- there's definitely some surface damage, but nothing nothing pierced the uh, reactor core or anything like that. Um, every there, you, you're not finding any booby traps or anything. Um, and Iggy, go ahead and give me one more. One more will do it pretty much. Yeah, hopefully this time my, my drama die is a bit higher than... <laughs> That's all you needed. Uh, you can flip a switch and power the ship back up if you want. There we go. And let there be light! And I flick the switch. <laughs> all, the, the, all the regular lights come up. You know, panels fully light up instead of just being on emergency backup. Um, yeah. Yeah. You have you have access to the well. Yes, the ship is fully up. The reactor, it, you know, it, it, he takes a look at it. The uh, the reactor looks to be. Um, I'm sorry, Addy takes a look at it. And the reactor looks to be uh, you know, fully functional. Um, you know, you could fire up the Epstein drive pretty much whenever you want. Um, it'll take a few minutes if if you want to get if you want to prepare the Epstein to to charge up. It'll take a few minutes, but that's up to you. Yeah, you should probably, probably start that process in case okay. we need to get away. Should we, like, uh, move our stuff into the ship <laughs> if we're going to take it? <laughs> yeah, do we have room? Is there room in the uh, in the cargo bay for our smaller ship in this ship? Or is no, it- no, your ship isn't that much. Yours is, like, 20 meters. This one's 30 meters. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought, but it's worth it. It's worth asking. And this one is much better armed and just has a better Epstein drive and, you know, just all around a, a sturdier ship. So, uh, Thinky Thoughts, uh, we should move the bodies into our ship and move our stuff into this ship. Maybe we should just space them. That's probably a better option. I don't know if we should turn our old ship into a crime scene then. Will be <laughs> I'm still not sure why you guys are so dead set on taking this ship. We could just take the payload, space this one, let the wreckers clean it up. Because this ship is amazing. This ship is pretty it's, badass. I mean, it's our fine. Ship we don't have to take the awesome ship. Yeah, I mean, Nico, when when you like hit hit the Epstein on the other one, it's like it just feels like it's chugging. It just won't. You know, it doesn't do it. This ship, you can just tell, looking at these engines, that this baby's going to fly. I'm I'm drooling a little bit. Yeah, our other ship's about two weeks away from blowing up on its own, so maybe, you know, just for OSHA's sake, we should uh, <laughs> upload. Well, that's because we have a knockoff Martian engineer who can't get it up and running. <laughs> I'm the real <laughs> deal, baby. Well, if this is a Martian ship, and we have a Martian engineer... We can go whole hog. All right, let's go check out command and see if if we can figure out any more information on this puppy. 
All right, so he's just going to glide all the way up to command at this point. It, is there in is there an, an ability to now that everything's online to scan this ship to see if there are any more of the drones on board from from where we are in the in you could you could it, it, there might if they had depending on their security they might have something up in command um, okay but, but maybe in command but not down here in reactor no perfect that's my that's it so yeah I'm I'm ready to head up as well then I, I have a terrible feeling that it's up there well I, I'll, I'll throw my hat in that ring as well I already sprained my ankle for this so uh, <laughs> I'm not going first next time. So who's who's going up first? I'll look at Izzy to see if Izzy budges, but if Izzy doesn't budge, I will go. Okay. Is Izzy budging? Okay. <laughs> I'll st- <laughs> we'll have a stare off, and I'll just be like, "All right, fine, fine." This knockoff Martian engineer is gonna go. I would love to go first, but she's already been injured. And I, if we need a second pilot, I'm the only one who knows how to fly a ship, so you're going to have to go this time. You don't know how to fly a ship. I know how to fly a ship. Mm. This is the first time here, you know, but Actually, yeah, we, I'll... All of you give me a, a a perception test. If you have hearing, you can use that. Or sight. Or see. Or see. Perception. Seven! I don't... I'm too busy arguing. All right. I rolled roll. an 11 with four stunt points. Yeah, you have to succeed first. That's right. You still, <laughs> you still haven't good. used the boon that you got earlier. Who? Oh, Gary. That's right. I forgot that I was booned. Uh, if you want to use the boon on that, that would be a success. Absolutely, yeah. I'll, I'll immediately I'll, I'll catch the boon. Okay. As you're passing through the crew quarters, you're just sort of sli- you know, sliding up the, the ladder, um, you are fairly certain you see one of the doors shut. Like it was opened and then something is something or someone shuts it. Uh, I grab Addy by the foot before he cl- climbs up to the next level. Uh. Okay, come here. I st- and I'll step off the ladder and kind of guide you down in that zero G I'll, next to me. I'll and land, I click my boots I, on. I point at the door. That door just closed on its own. This door right here. I, I'll uh, get up uh, next to the frame, uh, you know, with my gut up, and I'll look at Izzy and I'll nod, and I'll wait for Izzy to push the button. Yeah, it'll it'll automatic open now. Oh, nice. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll look around. Let's see. Are, are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you open it up. And you see a room here. Oh wait, wrong thing. You don't see a room because I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> the invisible room. It's the there, but you can't see it. So yeah, it, it's another. Uh, it looks like part of a, um, you know, crew area. Um, there is another. You know, there's little doors, both you know, to your right and to your left as well. Just more it appears to be empty. Yep, it's just empty. Uh, I'll I'll move to another door, and I'll. But there, I mean, there are the doors beyond there. The, the, oh, okay. there, are, there are interior doors there too. What's going on, guys? Is he said they saw some. Yeah, there's there's someone or something behind one of these doors. All right. The jig is up. Come on out. We're all armed. I'll just shout into the hallway. Well, you're in a... Oh, oh well, actually, that's a good point. You did... Uh... You... You did... Uh... You do have power. Did, were... did you want to restore atmosphere? Uh, if, yeah, if, if, that was, that. if that was all at once, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could you could have restored that. Now keep in mind something: if if someone has control elsewhere, it, they could uh, vent the atmosphere fairly quickly. Uh, but if you just have your visors open, you could, you know, you could still close close it quick enough, probably. Perfect. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what's going on. I'll take, I'll take my chances with probably for right now. It seems okay. like it's, 
Yeah, you, you've yeah, you restored atmosphere, uh, but there, of course there's still no gravity because you're not under thrust. Um, but, uh, yeah, you shout. You, you shout, come, at, come out of here? Or what's yes, that's right. Here. Yeah, does anybody here show yourself? We're all, all, all three of us are armed. The, the door basically up here opens. And I've got my gun, but I'm trying to shake where the other two are much more seasoned with their gun. I'm, <laughs> I'm tripling with mine. And you see someone in a spacesuit. In a vaccine. And their hands are up. <laughs> I'll, I'll, point, I'll point my gun full on on them. Nice and easy now. I... And they flip up uh, the their visor. That's Same almost a shoot. really good time for a five or ten minute break. Oh, it is. You're right. <laughs> good, good, I th- that's I that's a hell of a cliffhanger. Yep. But they flip up their visor and and, uh, and what? You see Say it. it. I'll just use that instead. All right. Uh, yeah, let's take a five-minute break. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for watching so far. Uh, we've been fresh out the box playing uh, The Expanse uh, with Ian Lemke from Green Ronin. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We are fresh out the box playing The Expanse uh, once again with Ian Lemke from Green Ronin. Uh, and we're having a great time so far, so... Yeah, that's right. I'm Casualty CDG, but you can call me Gary. Tonight, I'll be playing the part of Iggy Moon, the intelligence slash technology hacker type on the show. And I'm Alicia Goldberg. You can find me on Twitter at Hidden Audio. And uh, I'm playing Nico Velez, who is a brave little pilot. The bravest little pilot that could. Kind of beat up right now. (laughs) Yeah, kind of beat up right now. I forgot to say my name. I'm Jahan. And I'm playing Addison Grant. I'm Ian Lemke. I'm the current developer for the Expanse role-playing game and the GM for the game tonight. Having fun. I'm glad, man. This is this, this is great. I always right. love learning a new system, and and even the frustrating parts of a new system are a lot of fun, right? So, like the skill challenge when all I need to do is pass a damn check, but like. I'm passing the check with a trash drama die. So, so even though I'm an ace hacker, it's totally irrelevant. And I'm, I'm very slowly getting it done. I think is super funny. I love that about the system. I love that even though you're good, you can pass your checks and the drama die, that third D6, uh, the way that it affects the outcome of all these rolls, even though it's already there, it's already on the table. And so you can just derive from that number. Uh, it's a super intriguing part about this age system. I'm loving it. I also enjoy it. Yeah, I'm having fun. I don't know much about... I mean, I like this is like my third ever RPG session. Huh. Uh, uh-huh. So, I know nothing. <laughs> I, I would never have fun. guessed that. I would have never <laughs> guessed that at all. No, you seem, you're, uh, you seem like a professional. So. Aw, thanks. That's good. Yeah, really. I mean, the... the, the the good thing about the age system is the basic 3d6 thing hit a target number it's pretty simple so yeah yeah it keeps the target numbers low it keeps them manageable from a game master's perspective uh you know there's not much sway in how the dice can go and then of course like i said the, the drama die i'm going to talk about the drama die for like the next 10 years of my life about how much i love <laughs> the 3d6 I'll, at the I'll, table it's good it's and good. the resolution is already there <laughs> you don't have to roll again i'm going to keep talking about it so Go on, just just let me nerd out about the drama die for a while. Sure. <laughs> let me know when you want to be, want to jump back in. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, but if we might circle back. I'm just letting you know. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, so yes, you would just uh, you, uh, you've been heading up towards the command section of the ship uh, when uh, Addy noticed uh, one of the doors close in. in as you were going by um, in one of the in the crew quarters, um, and upon investigation, coming through a couple rooms, uh, you encounter a person in a in a uh, in a vac suit, um, and it, she lifts up the visor, and it's a woman, and she has her hands raised. And says, please, please, th- just don't shoot. I, I, who are you? 
I'll, I'll lower my gun. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna, like, put the butt of my gun under my arm so I can hold it with, like, one arm. <clears throat> and I'm gonna walk up, I'm gonna pat her down. Um, well... Or I'm gonna try to. Patting her, I mean, she's not gonna be able to get anything that's inside the vac suit, but that's you can really see that she she actually does have a pistol holstered on. on oh, I'm, I'm, I will walk up in that same fashion then, and I will take her pistol. Okay, that's fine. She doesn't stop you. you, okay. you I mean, she looks really nervous. <laughs> After I take it, I'll, I'll just nod it uh, at Nico and Izzy. Um, so what now? Uh, who are you? K. K. Tallinn. K. Tallinn. Uh, yeah. Are you part of the crew, or are you from the attackers? The attackers? I mean, the drones? I guess. I'm not a drone. I, 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 I'm, I'm the, the engineer backup pilot. <laughs> yes, I'm one of the crew. Or one of the crew when we had a crew. I think everybody's dead at this point. How did you survive? Um, I hid. <laughs> um, when the drones started moving, well, I fortunately was there when... Um, when uh, Jimmy uh, opened up one of the crates and the and the drone attacked, I managed to get away, um, and uh, I, I told him he shouldn't open those crates. Um, apparently, it activated them. Um, from what I know, you know, from the people we got these from, they're they're some kind of uh, security drones uh, meant to take over ships basically you, you, you set them loose and they, they take control of the ship um, I was fortunate enough to be near the airlock when uh, when we when the ship started venting oxygen I got a vac, vac suit on grabbed a couple bottles ran up to the crew quarters and I've hid here ever since uh I'm a look past her. Is does it look like she's been in there for a while? Well, it's I mean it'd be hard to tell hard to because tell. she would have been in a vac suit the whole time. So it's not like there's gonna be litter around. Um, uh, you do see uh, several uh, empty, <laughs> what look to be empty uh, air canisters just sort of floating around. Um, so that could be you know some indication. I'll I'll I'll, I'll lower my gun. I can't believe you got here. I, I, I had not even an hour of air left. Thank you. Thank you. I can't help you enough. I can't. I can't. Thank you enough. All, all the day's work. I'll just. I'll. I'll smile and I'll nudge Izzy. Like, did you? Did you get the drones? Uh, two out of three are down. There's probably three. Yeah, there were three crates. Yeah, we already crawled down to the bottom of the hold and, and <clears throat> took care of uh, we took care of one when we came in. We took care of one in the bottom. We saw all three crates. So now Addy's armored up. He's got the assault rifle, so we should have an advantage going in against this last one. Unfortunately, Nico's already worse for wear. Do you know where it is? We have to think it's in the command chamber up a uh, command room up above us. Okay, so you haven't been there yet. All right, yeah, Hopefully. probably Hopefully that would make sense if they issue. take control of ships. Yeah, it, it seems like they do exactly what they were designed to do. Yeah, I, I'm just glad I looked out again. I, I, I felt the vibrations in the hall. I guess did you fight one of them outside here or something? It's it felt like gunfire. Uh, so I, that was right outside the door, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I took a look. But I didn't see anyone. Then I saw something coming up the ladder, and I, I ducked back in here. I don't Thank suppose you. you know what the purpose of this vessel was before the drones took over, did you? Uh, we were um, uh, legitimate business people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Iggy laughs out loud in response. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've... I've been a, a legitimate business person before also. I understand. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Maybe you, 
handling some some tech that was a little too hot for you. Apparently, yeah, we were uh, we we it, it was uh, Russian military. I'm not Russian. <laughs> Martian military uh, gear. Uh, we, I think, well, of course, at this point, we've missed our rendezvous, so I don't know. You haven't found anyone else alive on board, I, I suppose. Uh, no. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. All right. <sighs> well, um, I guess up to the command area. I'd say you uh, you hold tight here in these chambers, and we'll come back for you when it's clear. All right, I'll do that. She moves forward into like, you know, this room here, but. Uh, I, I lean to Addy. Hey, can you lock her in? Yeah, probably. It'd just be a tech test. Or engineering, whichever. I will lock her in here. I'm an engineer. I shall engineer closed. Ooh, girl, with stop points. Yeah, you can, uh, I'll say with the two stop points, you can open it remotely. If you nice. Want. I like and it. You can, you can monitor it from your hand terminal. I'll, I'll 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 wave my my hand terminal at Iggy and be like, haha, I can open it remotely. You can share that with others too if you want. You know, it's up to you. That capability. All right, so you continue on up, up, up into the great beyond. No, into the cargo hold. I mean, sorry, into the command center. Yeah. Who's going first? I'm gonna, I'm gonna push Iggy this time. I'm like, it's your turn. Oh no! 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 Someone has to fly the ship. Someone has to fly the ship. Something happens to me. Who's gonna? Nico flies the ship. Well, what if what if the computers break down? I I begrudgingly go up first. Uh. With my finger on the trigger, I, it's, it's not indexed, and the safety is not on. I'm jumpy, and I'm ready to fire it. Okay, uh, you get up to the next level. Um, it's sort of a command area. There is the co- the actual cockpit where the pilot is is up at the top of these stairs. So, so once I make it to this section, I'll reach down and help Addison up and and say, "All right, now it's your turn," and look up the ladder. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come on. Uh, Oops, sorry, wrong one. Right. I'll be looking around, though. I'm ready. I'm ready to get attacked by another drone. <laughs> okay. Where are you going? Up up the ladder? Yeah. I'll I mean, up the, up the stairs, rather? Yeah. Sort of stairs, ladder kind of thing. Um, meanwhile, uh, Iggy, go ahead and give me a, a perception test. And, and Nico. Uh, perception... And mine was a 12, and Nico uh, had a connectivity issue. She'll be back in a second, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, you talk to her? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's not here. I just flipped over to that screen. Okay. Well, uh, 12. Yeah, with the 12, um, the, uh, the the comms panel on one, at one of the stations is blinking. Like, there's an incoming message. Um, and you wanted me to roll, too, right? Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Addy, going up the stairs. There's the good roll right there. 14 with four stunt points. Okay, uh, yeah, you actually creep up real quiet-like. Uh, well, you sort of, like, pull yourself up there. You sort of peek around the corner, and you see the drum. Um, you, you don't even... No, 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 no video. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, so to recap there real quick, you're all up in the command level. Um, Iggy noticed uh, the uh, the comms panel blinking, like there's an incoming message. Uh, Addy is creeping up the stairs to the cockpit. Um, we sort of left you down in command since you were having some trouble there. Do you want to follow Addy, or are you remaining down in the command area? Hold on. No worries. 
not freeze again, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something's happening. Okay, um, would you mind doing that recap one more time? Sure, no problem. You're up in the command area, um, where there's like four, four crash couches, uh, where there, you know, people for you're doing technical stuff, scanning, things like that, comms, all that sort of thing are here. Uh, and then there's stairs, sort of stair ladder thing that goes up to the cockpit itself, where the pilot would be. Uh, Iggy is down here in, in the command area, um, and is looking, at, and uh, has noticed that, uh, a, a comms panel is blinking like there's an incoming message um meanwhile addy is is creeping up the stairs to the uh actual uh cockpit um i would like to listen to the comm message what happened to the green lady oh you left her locked in the room and in fact uh as i recall addy was addy or Iggy who it was me i disarmed her well no but but and also locked her in the oh yeah room. i also she, locked her yeah, she's locked in. You can remote open the door if you want, uh, but the door is, is overridden and locked. Did she, she say anything? Yeah, she seemed pretty trustworthy. She said that she was, uh, yeah, she hit the fan and she had hid away in there and was surviving off oxygen reserves with, behind the locked door. Uh, she heard the commotion. He came out to investigate it, saw us, and ran away to hide again. Uh, hmm. She seemed like she was telling the truth for the most part, yeah, but we see, locked her, we locked her in just Okay. Uh, they seem. I, I guess they were smuggling this stuff. Uh, the drones were designed to take over ships, and they work very well. So hmm. she said they were legitimate business people, and we all had a good laugh. And I told her that I've been a legitimate business person before too. <laughs> <laughs> and and Addy had, had done very well sneaking up the stairs. I'm going to say with four stun points. You, you actually, you know, you sort of glance over the railing. And you can tell it hasn't actually noticed you yet, apparently. Um, uh, it seems to be busy interfacing with the computers, uh, trying to do something. Do, do I think I can get up to and <clears throat> deactivate it? Uh, you could get up to it. Uh, with I, I will say with, with your stun points, that would allow you to get up to it. You would still have to make a test to de deactivate it. I would like to do that. All right, so you sneak up on it and go ahead and give me an engineering test. All right. um, I would like to boost that. Okay, yeah, you'll need a 15. Yeah, I, f I thought as much. I will use two of my fork shoe okay. to bump that up. Right, so there you go. Um, Gives you a 15. So, like before, I will allow you to disable, since you didn't get any stunt points or anything, you sort of just got it. You can disable one aspect of it. You can't actually shut it fully off. I'm going to um, disable its gun. Okay, so you just jam its gun real good um, before it even gets to act. And then, then, then we can roll initiative. Yeah. And then, well, it'll be between you two first because no one else really knows what's going on. <laughs> As I jam the gun, I'll shout out, Ha ha, gotcha! <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I got an 11 on my dicks. Oh no, I go second. Okay, so it, it reacts though. It's like, ah! <laughs> and you see the, the little uh, stun baton come flying out and try to hit you. Uh -oh. Um... Well, <laughs> well, that's a hit. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Just barely. Just barely hit. No. Um, yeah, it, it whacks you. Um, doesn't get any stunt points, though, so. That's good. Um, and it does six damage to you. That will drop me down to two fortune. Okay. But you're still there. Uh and go, you, you get in action then. It's better than getting shot. Uh, yeah, I will... Uh, well, I guess I'll put my I'll point my gun at an open fire. Uh, can okay. I take the aim action? Yes, you can. Okay. I shall do that. And... Fire! Yeah! Stop points! 
Five. Okay. Uh, so I would like to do the thing where I circumvent its armor. Okay. That leaves you three stun points if you want. Um, yeah, don't you? Have the machine gun one since you have a machine gun. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, wait, well, actually, that hits multiple people, oh, so that's not going to really be helpful. Long burst, oh, long burst. Okay, yeah. uh, makes I can one with five meters of damage. Okay, so, but, but that actually, that does, let me see here, short burst. Oh, short burst, automatic. Ignore one point of your opponent's toughness per tough, uh, for, per stunt point. Spend. So you could have it with one and then spend three more and it totally ignores its toughness. So yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. Yes. And it's 2d6. So oh, yeah. And it has no toughness armor at all at this point, so you're probably going to destroy Seven it. Seven plus one, eight. Eight. Okay, so to, it, it takes injured and rolls 1d6, it rolls a one, it takes wounded, it no, it's it's gone. Yes. You you open up on it and just destroy the drone. Do, 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 do. Gone. Dead drone. Uh, you have the ship. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> you all hear that, uh, Nico. You were just well. Actually, I will allow you to first. You said you wanted to check the comms channel, right? I did. Okay. Uh, you open it up. Uh, there is a ship hailing you. And uh, it says, uh, this is a Sybil. We're incoming. Report your status. Over. Uh, I guess. Do, do I know who the Sybil is? Nope. And and they said the ship's name is Picus? No, they said this is, uh, yeah, and, and then they say Picus. What's going Pikus. on? Uh, this is Picus. Uh, everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as she picks up the radio and says this is Picus, I'm going to cross my arms and lean back on the console and be like, yeah, let's see how this plays out. This should be a lot of fun. <laughs> so this is Picus now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Why didn't you show up for the rendezvous? What's going on? Uh, ran into some Martians. Martians? It, who's that other ship attached to you? Help. Help? They came by to help. Everything's... At that you point, you're, you hear crunch, bang, <laughs> coming from the uh, cockpit up above. <laughs> oh, I got it! What the hell is that? Says the person over the comms. I would like to walk over and unplug the comms. That's it. <laughs> okay, you can just turn it off. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk over and hit the power button if if you let me, if that's okay. Um, if if I let you. Yeah, if you want to like push me away and stop me, that's fine. I'm not gonna like fight you to turn off the comms, but I'm just gonna. Walk yeah, over I'd, and... I'd I'd push you away because like okay. I want. I've got my finger over the power button, like, if you want me to hang up, I can just... Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, we got some... We had a firefight, some Martians on board, uh, we sent out a distress call, and the ship attached to us responded. Uh, we got everything under control, though. It will be at the rendezvous in... a shake. But we're incoming. That that's not a problem, Picus. We're gonna board you. Um, so have everyone stand down, please. Uh, you guys done shooting? Yeah, you just heard one burst from up above. Okay. Um, he yelled, "Got it! I got it!" <laughs> uh. Okay, I, I'm gonna hang up the comms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Click. Uh, I'll um, move, guys. It is time to go. I'll peek on down the stairs. I'll be like, uh, I think I got the last drone. Everything good down here? No, we gotta go. We are on a timetable now. Oh well, no! I hate hate to have to go with Plan A because I thought Plan A was kind of a bad idea. 
but maybe we should shove all these dead bodies in our ship, put our stowaway in there, and, uh, bye bye I don't feel right about leaving the girl. The, they're on the way, the, the other ship, they'll pick her up, and obviously if, they're allies. If we steal this ship from, like, another spy ship, they are going to hunt us. I'm pretty sure they were going to hunt us the second we boarded this ship and saw what we saw. We know too much. We know too much! Uh, what was the what? other ship called? The Sybil. The Sybil. Uh, I'm going to go down the ladder and open up that door I locked. Okay, you're going all the way down. Okay. Uh, and you ask go. the stowaway uh, if they, they, she knows about them. I'm gonna go with him. Okay, it's just like uh, this. This what it, and, and and Iggy, what are you doing? Um. So they both left. I'm gonna go ahead and strap into the captain's chair and start firing up the drive. Okay. Uh, I have every intention to get the hell out of here. Um, you're being hailed again. <clears throat> <clears throat> Click. <laughs> Pika, stand down, turn off your driver, we're launching yeah, torpedo. This is the Pikus. Uh Our starboard side is now clear for landing. If you want to go ahead and dock with us, just uh, we're going through some routine engines tests. We did have a quick power outage, uh, but, but prepare to dock on starboard side. That's some good bullshit. <laughs> yeah, give me the communications test. Communications test. Yeah. That is Please. apparently some terrible bullshit. That is terrible. <laughs> so many stunts. They're like, man, that guy's got pizzazz, but that's a bunch of bullshit. You can always use your fate <laughs> points. Oh, that's right. I can use fate points. Uh, I would like to use. I would love to use some of my fortune points. Okay. Uh, I would like to use. I rolled an eight. I would like that to be like a twelve ish. Yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, let me use four. Yeah, you can do that. You can increase one to a four. Um. All right, so you increase it to a six. Uh, you, uh, like, all right, but don't make any funny moves. <laughs> Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Sybil. I you, you see lights lighting up on all the on screens and everything indicating that you've been target locked. Uh, I'm going to come on the PA now and say... Uh, the Sybil's got us target locked. They're demanding to board. Once you guys finish up with the stowaway, go ahead and take your seats on crash couches. It's about time to get the hell out of here. Nico, if you'd like to come upstairs and take reins, it's all yours. I've got it all fired up for you. I'll give. Right. I'm going to sort of rewind for a minute. They get down there and are letting yeah, the... That's, uh, right. the, 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 no, that's yeah, fine. This scene ends. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, you, you tell Kay that there's the, the Sybil you know, is incoming and her eyes get big. It's like, that's Grizz. That's Captain Grizz. That's the captain we were supposed to rendezvous with. Um, he's gonna kill us all. Oh, well that's good to know. Uh, I guess <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll point her in a chair. Get in a chair. We're leaving. <laughs> that's all I wanted yeah, Nico, to know. Nico just makes a line for the cockpit. She's gonna jam this thing to 11. All right, so you're making a beeline to the, to the cockpit. As soon as she comes up, I will get out of her chair, and I will get into the communications chair and start working right. on jamming sensors. Right, okay. Uh, so we will move the ship combat at, the, at this point. So you're, I take it you're decoupling with your ship, and <laughs> basically yeah, leaving, which is basically I, I leaving everything behind at this point. I but. know, I, I go on comms and I'm like, say goodbye to all your personal effects, we're fucking leaving. He's my French. I run through my head about my personal effects, and it's like a toothbrush and a cup. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not a big deal. <laughs> All right. Um, we don't have a commander of the ship, so you don't have anyone who can issue orders. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. Space Man, I, wanna, I didn't know that was a thing. I wanted to play like a maybe a spy or an emissary in our upcoming campaign, but knowing that a commander is a specific class. Um, no, it's not a class. It's just if you have the command skill. Anybody who has the command skill can do it. And theoretically, one of you could do it, 
just using communication without the command skill. Um, but but given that that this is such a small crew and you're all going to be taking actions, you probably don't want to do that because if you're doing multiple tests, you're Ooh. gonna you know. Uh, I'm gonna enlist help. the aid of the stowaway. Okay. I'm going to try and get her to man a station so that we have a better crew. Sure. Because she's going to die too, so haha. Yeah, she doesn't believe that they're, they're going to let her live at this point anyway. Um, because, you know, of the current situation. I'll just look at her uh, and be like, we're all on the same page, right? And then I'll strap into my chair. All right. Okay, so no command. Space so command. you are. You were going to try to get away. Um, you are at long range currently. Um, what you want to do is change range. So you're just trying to blast the heck out of here. Yeah. Okay. The ship is roughly the same size as yours. Now, you can uh, do a high G maneuver. If you wish, which is basically you're basically punching it as fast as you can in this case. Uh, the test result allowing the ship to shift up to two range bands. Um, this puts a strain on everyone on the ship. However, uh, requiring a Constitution test equal to st a stamina, a Constitution stamina test with eight of eight plus the maneuver bonus. Um, on a failure, the character suffers uh, penetrating damage. So. If you want to give yourself a bonus to uh, your evasive, you can do that. Um, if not, then it'll just be a straight roll. Uh, I'm going to do it. Okay. Oh. Hold on to your butts. Okay, so you get to choose anywhere from plus one to plus six. Uh, but remember, that is also the penalty for making your constitution tests. Uh, let's go with plus two. Okay. So you're going to make a piloting roll plus two. So you just roll, roll your pilot and you'll get a plus two. Okay. That's a 12. Um... Okay. It's so close. It's so close. They fire up a high G burn of the same. It's going to use her for to roll. It's easier. Uh, and ooh! Oh no, they beat you. Okay, just by one. Oh my god. No. So oh, we had uh, uh, we had a plus two though, right? Yeah, so did they. Oh, so they, they also had a plus two. They, yeah. they, they were matching your burn. Gotcha. Um. Oh no. So they are keeping the range. They're keeping it at long range. They didn't manage to close on you though. Oh, but they did get five stun points. Um, <laughs> yikes. I will hold on to those. They can use this to resist run. All of you need to make a constitution test. Difficulty 10. If you have stamina, you can use that. 13. 14. No problem. 11. Yeah. All right. You need a 10, so that's you're fine. Uh, yeah, you're like, whoa. <laughs> you feel the G-forces uh, against you as you're trying to outrun them. Uh, okay, now we do electronic warfare. Uh, this is a technology test. From who? Uh, that would be Iggy, I would presume. Yes. 16. Okay. I was ready to go on these, on the, on the sensors. This is why you guys put up with the way that Iggy is, is because when it comes to hacking sensors, there's nobody better. Iggy does not like to get shot down. <laughs> okay, so you got a 16. Uh, and what was your, what did you roll in your drama die? 
uh, a four on the drama die. Okay. I am just using. It. This is actually a technology test, even though it's going to say engineering. Okay, you win. So you get a uh, the evading. Sh- okay, um, you get a bonus equal to half the drama die round up, which will be two, which can be applied to either all defenses, uh, defensive actions, or the target number to evade uh, the winning ships att- on the winning ships attack round. Okay, so. Now we do weapon attacks. Um, you're too long range, too long range to use PVCs. Uh, however, at long range, you can fire, you can fire torpedoes, which you do have. Uh, I would be happy to let a torpedo loose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a way to phrase it. Can I shoot a torpedo? It would be my <laughs> genuine pleasure. Well, if no one else is gonna shoot, no one me. else is gonna do it. Yeah. Just do it, Addy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I could just shoot two at once next turn if I take my time. Oh my god! <laughs> so, both ships launch torpedoes. Now it will be. Oh, it will take you. It will take two rounds. Uh, until the uh, until those torpedoes uh, reach any ships, um, <clears throat> so at that point uh, we go actually back uh, to the beginning of the round because you can't fire PDCs. You don't have uh, a railgun, so this is another role: Nico versus the other pilot. All right, so is this just a straight roll this time? Yeah, straight piloting, unless you want to do... Well, do you want to give yourself... You, you can you can still do high G maneuvering. Let's do plus one high G maneuvering. Okay, so you get a plus one to your roll. I'm just going to say they'll match you. They're not going to They're not gonna go crazy, but... Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And you yeah. Beat them out. And they got some points. Okay. Wait, so, did I beat them? Yeah, you did. You got a 21. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Wow. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. With five stunt points, um, I'm going to say, yeah, you managed to pull out of range so they cannot fire another torpedo. Of course, you can't either at that point. Um and you have flown into a small cluster of uh, of asteroids. You were in the belt, uh, and you were, you know, um, where in the real world, in the real universe, you know, it, it's not like Star Wars where there's asteroids every, you know, everywhere. But this is like, it looks like, it seems like maybe an asteroid broke up. So it, there's like a whole little cluster that, you, that are fairly close together. Um, and so you're flying in and out from the, between that, and that is also uh, disabling their sensor capability. So, if Iggy can beat them in a sensors test, uh, you may lose them. Oh, I crack my knuckles. <clears throat> I can beat them in a sensors test. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'm really happy that you never went first and you didn't take damage because you have all these points. I do. I'm going to spend four. One, two, three, four, before I even know what my... Well, you don't have to spend anything yet. You, oh, you, no, you, don't have to. Be, you don't have to spend it in advance. That's fine. Uh, and, and you get a plus two because because you flew into the, this asteroid field. Even better. Um, so here is technology. I rolled a 17. And the beat... Uh, so four plus two, that's a 19. Okay, and I rolled a nine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you doubled their roll. Uh and you got a five on the stunt die. Yeah, you you basically use the, this field that they're coming flying through, uh, try, I mean, they're trying to find you. You lose them. You keep significant range. You actually extend the range out further, and you just you just keep flying. Um, I tell you, Nico, if you could swing right towards that asteroid, right around there, that should give them an EMP discharge for just long enough for us to get the hell out of this system. 
And but you still get a chance to hit them with your torpedo if you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll take it. So well, you don't have to roll anything. They just have to roll. Uh, okay. Torpedo. So I it's, it has a, like uh, a an electric field or something just to throw off their sensors. Yep. Yeah. No, you, you've already. Guys okay, so you get 13, 14, 15. Oh, no, wait. Okay. Okay. Well, they have to make a point defense. 10. Plus, see if you said that. 10, 13, 14. They need a 16. Holy crap. Let's see if they got it. <laughs> Boom! And you hit them with your torpedo! Torpedo does four d six damage. Whoa! Uh, I guess I guess the uh, Addy, you want to roll that? Yeah. Tick that. It's a nine. Okay. Uh, what did you get? Nine. Yeah. And it, it gets it has a haul of two d six. Okay. So. Well, it's, it's just to try and resist it. It did not entirely resist it. Um, yeah, roll 1d6. Rolling 1d6. Two. You hit their... Yeah, okay, you, you hurt their hull. Um... So here's what happens. Yeah, you you spin fly th out the other side of the, this uh, this astro this broken up asteroid cloud. Uh, just as they're going into it, as they're in there, they get smacked in, in the nose with your torpedo, which damages their hull. Um, they could try and continue after you, but by the time they lose you in there, and by the time they get out, you are so far away, they are damaged. You've bloodied their nose. Um, they power down their Epstein. Uh, allowing you to escape. You do get a parting message of, though, this is Captain Grizz of the Sybil. We see you, Picus. We see you, and we'll find you. I hail back. Suck my dick, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> they almost fire up their Epstein again, trying to come after you, but no. <laughs> and you have escaped with your new ship and a uh, potential crew member. Uh, I mean, it's technically, I mean, her ship technically now, but she also would need a crew, so, you know, she'd probably be willing to go in on it. You know, how about 25% each? <laughs> Sounds fair. Yep. Uh, yep. She knows the ship, you know. I'll give her back her gun and be like, partner. Partner. She puts out her hand. There you go. I will take it. Offers her hand to all of you. It's, I give uh, her a fist bump. She fist bumps you back. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of what kind of trouble we can get into out here. We, we've got a cargo hold full of uh, Russian... Uh, why did you keep saying Russian? <laughs> Martian <laughs> weapons. <laughs> so yeah, remember remember. Us why we have a cargo hold full of Russian weapons? I mean, Martian, Martian weapons. weapons. Um, they were forty-sevens uh, in the cargo hold. <laughs> there was someone on Mars. Uh, the cap. He, she doesn't know the details. Their captain had a contact on Mars who was in logistics and uh, was willing to give you know basically unload some Martian weaponry. Uh, and uh, he also didn't... You were supposed... To, the Sybil was basically going to buy... Well, they were supposed to go to the Sybil. Um, they're sort of... Uh, they These two ships worked together in the past. But not anymore. No, not anymore. So there you have it. Uh, we have reached the end of Salad Job. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That was pretty great. That was awesome. Uh, 
uh, well, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, Ian Lemke, uh, you, you were great. You did great. Uh, it was awesome. It was fun. Um, you have anything you want to talk about? Uh, Green Ronin, The Expanse, yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm the developer for the game right now. Uh, we have a new book coming out, like I said. Uh, I'll give a little preview, too, of Beyond That. Uh, the next, it, hopefully, we're going to start rolling with books a little faster now. Ships was a big deal because uh, partly pandemic stuff and partly just we have thirty plus deck plans in, in, that, in that book, and deck plans just take time. I mean, it's between me and our production person at How and and the artist doing them, and you know, just all kinds of back and forth. Of, okay, how many level, how many decks do we need? What needs to be on each deck? That takes a lot of time and research. Um, so yeah, it just it took a little longer than a typical book. Um, and then we had pan pandemic slowdowns too, just horrible, horrible. Um, so that'll be out. And then after that, we'll have Beyond the Ring, um, which is going to be just what it sounds like. It's going to be about the ring space on the other side of the ring, Medina Station, and then uh, we're covering all the all the worlds that were mentioned or that are explored in the books. But we we actually aren't spending as much space on those because. Well, that information is kind of out there. Uh, what we focused on was creating all new worlds, um, which have been approved. Um, <laughs> so you have a whole bunch of other worlds to explore uh, that have never been written about, uh, and rules for creating your own colonies and running your own colonies and things like that. How like <clears throat> awesome and stressful is the process of creating a new planet that you have to get approved by the initial creators? That seems like like a, a <laughs> dream come true to be like an like a little kid's imaginary dream come true. Uh, yeah, fourth grade. I remember going to a birthday party where we opened Star Wars books with all the worlds that didn't exist, and we all planned what world you would want, what character you would want, what ship you would want. So hearing that you had to kind of get approval for that is super awesome to the kid in me. It wasn't that hard in it. The big thing, I didn't actually write any of the new worlds. Um, I Basically, I worked with writers. You know, I had writers that did that for this book. I mean, I do write for some of the books, and I always write filler stuff here and there, you know, throughout the books. But... Um, I, I, ha I basically had to make a big checklist for all of the writers. And remember this. Remember this. This is how alien worlds work in the expanse. And there's a lot of weirdness to that that just isn't, you know, it's just not your standard sci-fi stuff. Um, uh, and, of course, dealing with the proto-molecule and, and all that, too. Um, but we got to do some pretty crazy, wacky stuff. I was There were a couple I was worried about. That's what I was going to ask. Are there any that stick out in your head? Is like the, the oh yeah, I, I really can't say yet, or okay. I probably shouldn't say at all. But but what they are, but you'll you'll when, once you see the book, you, you know you'll have a good idea. Um, but there were definitely a few that was like, okay, they let that go, cool. Um, but you know, we couldn't do new alien races really or anything like that right. because that's just not part of the expanse. Uh, but we kind of sidestepped that a little bit. <laughs> so, <that was> <laughs> uh, so um. next Thursday is our session zero for the Expanse, where we're going to talk about what we want out of the game, make some characters, uh, and then I'm running a one shot uh, with some people on Friday of the Expanse. Do you have any advice for me as a game master running the Expanse? I mean, I, I guess you know, obviously for a one shot, you know, know your adventure well. Um, Try to th the thing that I try to do uh, with the expanse to give it that expanse feel and not just you know any old fan any old, old uh, sci-fi role-playing game is to to try to keep the science in there. You know, remember when they're in zero g. Remember well, and that's the thing. Don't call it zero g. It's microgravity. Uh, that's not actually a thing. Uh, just try to keep all of the all those uh, expanse flavor things in there. I think for me, that's the most important one of the most important aspects of running a game. Yeah, one of the things that you said that was really cool while we were playing is that since the ship wasn't moving, since it was sitting still, we were in microgravity. Yep. Uh, and that to me, that's the perfect example of how to keep it the expanse. That little bit of science, I was like, "Oh shit, that's right! It's not moving, so we are we are free floating. That's dope." And I, 
I don't know if everyone knows, but the, the way expanse ships work, I, I just flipped the Roll20 thing back to the layout of the ship. They're actually more like office buildings sort of going up because you get when you're under thrust it's pushing forward so the gravity is down um, it's not like you know uh, a another another sci-fi setting where the ship would be would be horizontal um, yeah it's really cool I like that that's that's kind of a neat thing well, well one of the things about the TV show I read that's kind of interesting they actually have tabs on the scripts indicating they have different color tabs for what kind of micro, what kind of gravity each scene is, is whether it's full gravity, third gravity, which is you know usually like Mars or a space station, or a ship even. Even when a ship's under thrust, they usually go at about third or or micro gravity. So yeah, it's it's kind of cool. That is really cool. Uh, yeah, but they, yeah, try and get into the different things. Uh, you know, maybe just pull like if you're if if you're having some Belter NPCs, have them throw out some Belter lingo if you can manage that. There's all kinds of websites out there uh, with uh, lots of uh, Belter Creole and stuff like that. Um, just anything you can do to give it the Expanse flavor, I guess. What's the best way to <clears throat> make a Martian feel different than an Earthly? <clears throat> um, it depends on... I mean, it's going to depend on the Martian character, obviously. I mean, by the world, I mean... Um, Oh God! Sorry to put my, you on the spot. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> the the Martian in the series. Um. Uh, anyway, he's a little bit uh, a little bit different than some Martians, and he's so friendly and open. Um, whereas you know Martians tend to be a little bit stoic and very practical about things uh, because you know they have limited resources. They're all about. They've been about uh, uh, you know terraforming Mars. If it's after the ring, it depends on the time when things take place too. If it's after the ring gates open and Mars starts being depopulated, they might be a little depressed about their home, uh, <laughs> a little moody because uh, the thing that that people, generations of people, have already built towards is suddenly vanishing, and people are wondering, you know, will Mars ever be terraformed? Maybe not now because what's the point if you have other worlds? <laughs> yeah. out there? I do um, like that part of the show. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I kind of based uh, the way I was playing my character a little bit on Alex, the, the yeah, pilot. Alex. Uh, I did the little, I tried to throw a little Southern in there. You know, I mean, I'm yeah. from Texas, so. Uh, yeah, so well, they, they tend to be uh, Texan, Texas and uh, from India uh, or, you know, Southeast Asia. Um, yeah, like uh, Alex uh, versus Bobby. Yeah. Right. Yep. I was considering playing a Martian, and I think that now, knowing that they're a little, knowing that they're a little Texas and a little stoic, that might play right to my strength. So I probably, I'm, I'm probably going to check that box and play a Martian. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that that's your stereotypical Martian. Like I said Alex is actually a little more gregarious than probably your typical Martian, um, but you know that's fine. Uh, yeah, but. A little bit about me, I guess I just say too, you know, I, I, I wear many hats. Uh, I do the expanse uh, for Green Running, uh, and then I also developed the, uh, wrote and developed the uh, Talisman Adventures fantasy role playing game, and I'm also working on my own game. If anyone wants to know what I'm up to, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Ian Lemke. Um, that's me. I, I was actually um, working. I'm looking at Talisman right now. Uh, I pulled it up already, and immediately in the first paragraph, I'm like, oh, I can play a ghoul assassin? I want to play this game. <laughs> we straight up don't have a fantasy game going right now. We, we just ended ours, yeah. Just finished Warhammer Fantasy yesterday. Uh, we're going to start playing Deadlands in the Expanse, and so we are already, our wheels are turning. We want another fantasy game in the mix. And I, Talisman, I hadn't heard of it until an hour ago, and I'm already thinking this looks pretty dope. So thank you. Uh, is You're it welcome. like the the same Talisman that is the board game? It's based on the board game. Gotcha. It, it, it is based on the board game setting. Uh, the board game is very generic in many ways, uh, but we very much leaned into the, sort of the fairy tale aspect of it, sort of a dark fairy tale. Um, wanted to keep it away from Warhammer and the and the real grim gritty of that. Um, so it's a little more high fantasy. Um, not to say it can't be dark, but you know, fairy tales can be pretty dark. I, I tend um, my games tend to run dark. I don't mean to, but I can't help it. I think there's something wrong with me. Uh, and we're doing like the board game. The, the various supplements that we come out are going to have new 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 ancestries and new classes in every major. Uh, so you know, 
the first one's Tales from the Dungeon, um, Tales of the Dungeon, and uh, that's going to have uh, what we have: Necromancer, Tomb Robber as classes, and then uh, uh, Minotaur and Vampire for oh, yeah. ancestors. So, I, I, again, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm looking forward to a future date when we can get you to come play Talisman with us on this channel. I was uh, about to ask the same thing. <laughs> I, I would be happy to do that anytime. Just let me know. Absolutely. We'll work something out. So, everybody else, if you want to see more of Fresh Out the Box, you want to see more Ian Limke, you want to see more me, Jahan, you want to see more Alicia, follow us, like us. We'll be playing, like I said, um, Cyberpunk right now on Wednesdays. We're playing Cyberpunk Red by Ar Artausorian for two more weeks. That campaign wraps up. We're doing Pinnacle in Entertainments. Savage World Deadlands. We're doing Green Ronin's The Expanse on Thursdays for like the next 30 weeks probably. We, we see this one going throughout the entire year as a long-term campaign. Uh, and of course, Fridays is whatever. It's a, it's a fresh potpourri over here at Fresh Out the Box. We're going to have Shiver this summer, which is an indie one-shot game that's kind of a cult horror TV-based game. Uh, it almost runs like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Supernatural. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's, a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's made by two brothers, uh, Barney and Charlie Menzies. They own game, one owns a game shop in England and the other's an independent director. And so these guys are super cool. They're, they're low-key and the game is super fun, man. So we've been playing that all summer. Uh, and I, do you have anything else? Anybody uh, else want to pick? And, uh, mm -hmm. We're happy to uh, welcome Alicia to uh, the cast. Uh, my understanding is this isn't a one-time thing. Uh, she's going to be playing The Expanse with us uh, for weeks to come. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I had been talking. I, I work with uh, Gary's brother on the... Thomas plays uh, one of the lead characters in uh, The Hidden Heart. Uh, and... I, he mentioned to me offhand that he DMs, he likes to DM, and I was like, yo, Thomas, you don't have to say yes, like, don't feel pressured just because, like, it's my, like, we work together or whatever, but, like, can I, the next, can you let me know the next time you're doing a campaign, starting a campaign, because I have been dying to play, and he just chucked all of my information at Gary, and Gary hit me up, and yay. <laughs> yeah, we're very happy that it, it happened that way. Um, and is there anything you want to say about the Hidden Heart uh, at Hidden Audio on Twitter uh, if you want to find out more about this upcoming horror show? Yeah, uh, really exciting. Uh, I've been working on this story for about a decade, um, and uh, finally, I it, it started out as a book and uh, was just getting rejection after rejection. So I started complaining about that to my friend Joshua, who's uh, an audio engineer, and he was like, well, I have an idea that we could publish this without having to get an agent. Uh, so we decided to do the audio drama route, and uh, super happy to, to do it with him. It's like a dream come true. Well, that, that, that sounds great. I look forward to listening to it. I look forward to working with you further. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Uh, thank you very much, Ian Lemke, for uh, giving us your time. Thank you, Green Ronin. Uh, shout out to Troy uh, for s helping set things up and getting us in here uh, with these very, very kind people. Uh, we've been fresh out the box. Uh, make sure to follow us on everything and stay tuned for future great things. Uh, everybody have a good night.